morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I have a special guest uh, today for interview number 100 in my interview series. I have a senior from St. Rose, Abby Antonoli. Abby, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Now, one reason I wanted you to be my 100th interview, because since I returned back to high school sports, you were the first player that I got to see all four years of. So, and obviously you're my niece's favorite player too. So she's, <laughs> she's going to be happy when she sees this. I was going to try to get her to pop on, but I think she's at soccer right now. Um, to get started, uh, you know, last year, you know, right after, you know, basically you guys played St. John, you girls played St. John Vianney and then the season ended the next day um, for everybody, you know, even though, you know, you were you didn't have the outcome you wanted against St. John Vianney. How did you handle, you know, COVID and, uh, you know, switching from, you know, being in school every day to virtual learning? Um, it was definitely a transition. And it was like, in the beginning, everyone just thought it was going to be two weeks. So it was like, no big deal. Um, but then it turned out to be the whole rest of the school year. And um, I kind of enjoyed being online during those months because I, we ended school half day and then I would just go outside and work out and my mom would just rebound for me. Um, but it was definitely weird because like we couldn't like get into like gyms at first because like it was just like taken so serious as it should have been. But like I had to like do all my training on my own and um, it was it was nice family bonding time, I guess, because my parents were involved in a lot of it. <laughs> That's, yeah, you know, that that was one big thing, you know, with players that they weren't able to be, you know, the competitive side of it, but, you know, going up against, you know, other girls and stuff like yeah. that, where you were just basically working on your skills and, you know, conditioning. Um, so you answered the second part about training and stuff. How did St. Rose do it? Did Were they, um, so you said it was half day. Did you have to be like on Google Meets and stuff like that? Yeah, it okay. was, um. And half days on um, Google Meet, so it was like literally straight from like eight to twelve thirty straight, like on a Google mm -hmm. Meet. I think they handled it like the best set of anybody I even talked to, because most kids really weren't on Google Meets or like could do their work anytime before like twelve midnight. But no, ours was pretty serious. And um, then this year, like when we have had quarantine, it's been all day on the Google Meet with an hour break for lunch. Um, so I feel like we haven't really missed a beat in school. Yeah, I, you know, I hear, you know, good things, you know, a lot for this year, you know, a lot of private schools did a pretty good job of, uh, you know, getting the kids back into the classrooms, whether, you know, two days a week or, what, you know, however they split it up. But it's good, you know, especially your senior year, you know, you want to see your, be with your friends and, you know, not have to look at a computer monitor every day. So, yeah. Now, you know, switching over to basketball, how old were you when you started playing? Um. I think I started playing like rec basketball in like fourth or fifth grade, but like not, I wasn't really like serious about it until like sixth grade. Okay. Uh, did you play any other sports when you were younger? Yeah. Um, I played soccer and that was like my main sport for like until like really eighth grade. Um, but I mean, I loved both and it was getting hard because I had traveled to like Virginia for soccer and the next weekend I'd be going to Pennsylvania for basketball. And my mom was like, all right, we got to pick one. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's, it's tough, you know, these days with, you know, you know, back, you know, when I was a kid, you know, you didn't have all that travel and stuff. You were yeah. able to do multiple sports where, you know, AAU didn't consume basically every month of the year except for when you're playing in high school basketball and, exactly. and you know academy soccer is pretty similar to that so it's tough to be able to balance it, you know if you want to play at the high level that you know you play at yeah. so I feel you know I feel bad for you kids and you know that's a little bit of a disappointment because you know my niece is starting PDA and you know she's probably not going to be playing basketball <laughs> <laughs> yeah yep um so what made you pick where basketball, you know, became your sport? I haven't, I like went to rec and like, I was just like, I just love basketball. I was like, I was so excited to go to practice. And like, my mom was like, oh my God, she's not this excited for soccer. And then <laughs> my mom was a soccer player. So like, okay. she obviously like loves soccer more. And um, then I, I was begging her to join an AAU team when I was younger and she was like well we're on soccer but we could try and do both and then 
then I started like when I was subbed out of soccer games I'd take like a soccer ball and start dribbling <laughs> it and she was like oh god this is over like <laughs> but then she she although she's a soccer player and she loves soccer like she loved watching basketball more so she was okay. like I love this anyway <laughs> so, so so you kind of converted her to basketball oh yeah too. she watches that's... basketball like every night on tv oh my god she's so funny <laughs> that's that's great um do you have any siblings yeah, I have two older brothers um, who are both out of college now, so. Did they play any sports growing up? Um, yeah, they didn't play basketball. Like, uh, my one brother played soccer and uh, wrestled in um, high school, and my other one played uh, football and baseball, and my other brother actually ran track, too. But um, they didn't play basketball. But they definitely uh, made me tough because uh, – when we were playing sports outside, like they they just like shove me to the ground and like not care. And then if I cried, I couldn't play with them. So <laughs> they, I, I definitely give that to them all the time. I always say thank you for making me tougher. <laughs> that's that's good. That's good. Yeah. I wonder if my sister would say the same about me. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. She was. I think she was probably the tougher one because she was the soccer <laughs> player in the family. <laughs> um. Now talking, you know, your parents and stuff. You you, you know you bring up your mom what have they meant to you in your development you know because you talk about you know being in Virginia one weekend and then another you know you know basketball tournament the following weekend how have they helped you in your development oh I I couldn't thank my parents enough and without them I wouldn't be the player I am today because I couldn't even count the amount of hours we've been in the car driving up the parkway or to a tournament I mean most of my life I even trained to use hoops which was an hour away and that was every day like going up and down and the amount of times I even studied with my mom in the car, like <laughs> reciting like vocab for like hours to practices or trainings is like insane. Um, but I literally wouldn't have learned like half the amount of stuff I learned or uh, had as many opportunities without them because they've sacrificed so much of their time. And I've talked to so many like parents like and kids like, and they'll be like, oh, like, oh, I'm not going to go there. It's too far. Like, I want to have the weekends to myself. That's what a parent would say. And I'm sitting there like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> my parents had, like, missed out so much of their weekend because of me. Like, everything revolved around me and my schedule. And they, like, their life was, like, paused. <laughs> and now that, like, I started driving again, my mom's, like, my mom and dad, like, literally have so much time on their hands that they used to never have. And they're like, what do we do? <laughs> now they're, like, have more plans and stuff. And it's so funny. But, like, they, I couldn't thank them enough. It's, it's funny, you, you know, you bring up, you know, you start driving. A, another parent that I'm close with in the local area, she's, her daughter just got the a license a couple months ago. And she said how much she's happy that yeah. frees up a little bit of her time now that every weekend she doesn't have to drive to camp, you know, to a training session or to, you know, game yeah. or, you know, whatever. Um, look, when, you know, growing up, who would you say was like a role model you looked up to? It could be a family member, athlete. Um. Basketball wise, um, I looked up to Caitlin Flaherty because okay. uh, she played at Point Beach and I live in Bayhead and my brothers went to Point Beach and I was supposed to go to Point Beach. That's my ascending district. So like, I just thought she was amazing. And I, I, and she is amazing. Um, and then I got to watch her and that was amazing. But uh, I guess my, of course, my, my parents are also my role models too. <laughs> I, I'm disappointed I was out of the basketball loop when uh Caitlin and, and you know the Mayberries uh were playing were playing and stuff I miss some uh, talented yeah. players then, then um now talking U.S. hoops how did you so I'm guessing you got involved through you know watching Caitlin and stuff that that's how you got introduced to the U U.S. hoops training yeah um like our AAU team like was offered like a free trial or something and I went there and um Tom Flaherty, who is, was like, who has impacted me so much, he like came up to me and he was like, oh my gosh, like you live near Point Pleasant. And he was like, Caitlin actually just injured her back. Um, so she's home for the summer and we're looking at, looking for her to have like a workout buddy um, at, down the shore at a park. And my day was like, my year was like me. And I was like, oh my God, no way. And so I got to train with her and Caitlin and Tom and, um, that's how I was kind of introduced to the whole thing. And it was very exciting for me. How has Coach uh, Larry and Coach Flaherty impacted you? Um, they've helped my offensive game through, like, all the shootouts and crossouts that they teach you. And um, 
um, all the dribbling moves um, that uh, you learn at a young age that um, don't seem like they'd be used in a game, but now as a, an older age, I feel like it's second nature. <laughs> they posted a video le- last season and, uh, you know, because they're always posting the videos on Twitter of training and stuff, and you could see the stuff that they're teaching you girls. You know, you, I saw a transition into your game last year. It was, you know, impressive, which is which is good, be, you know, it, you know, somebody like me outside seeing, you know, the players absorb all the, you know, knowledge that they're trying to pass down to, to you and, you know, being able to, you know, use it and, you know, try to, or, you know, in, in the games. Um. I want to talk AAU real quick before we talk, you know, St. Rose basketball. So you, you, did you start with the short shots? Um, well, when I was really little, I started with the Tom's River stars and then I went to the Lobos with John Mayo. So we were like really young. And then I went to the short shots. No, sorry. I went to the CJ Hawks, which was, um, a great team. Um, it was me, Madison, St. Rose, uh, jazz Boyd, Amelia Medola, Ryan Taylor, um, um, yeah, it's a good team. A bunch of us. Um, and it was so much fun. I mean, um, coach Whalen, Joe Allen was our coach. So he definitely taught me so much. Just um, just the game itself, like, especially like situational and in a game, like I'll never forget, like one time we were down by three points and we had like 20 seconds, uh, 10 seconds left. And I just assumed that everyone on the team knew we were down by three. And a girl takes the ball and makes a layup. And instead of it her being her fault, I got screamed at for like 20 minutes. And in the moment, I was like, why is he yelling at me? And he told me, like, I have to look at every girl in the, in the eyes and, like, tell them that we're up by – or down by three. And, like, to this day, like, I'll, like, look in people's eyes and I'm like, tell me you know, like, what we're doing right now. Because uh, thank God, like, he taught me so much of that. And that has become very useful. And there's so many other things that he taught me. Like, I, he was amazing. And then I went to the short shots. Um, that was just a great bunch of girls. It was so much fun. And not only um, are they all great basketball players, they're great people, and I'm still friends with them. And then my last year, um, I went to the Demons, and um, I didn't really play with them because of COVID, and I was committed. So I think I only played, like, one tournament, but uh, that's that. Yeah, that um... – yeah, last season, last last off season stunk for everyone <laughs> with yeah. COVID and stuff. Um, and Demons is run by Coach Leary, right? Yes. Okay. Um, mo- you know, moving to, to St. Rose. Um, what were goals you set for yourself um, entering high school that you wanted to achieve through four, you know, your four year career? Um, I obviously wanted to be like a starter. Uh, I knew it wasn't going to happen my freshman year with the talented team we had, but I wanted to be an impact player um, and definitely like bring something off the bench. Um, but I wanted to try and be all shore and all state. And um, yeah, and I wanted our Tim team to win a state championship at some point too. Um, uh, track also. <laughs> I didn't really know what I was going to do freshman year, but when I started to run, I wanted to win. I wanted to win states. <laughs> so. um, before we talk, we'll talk, we'll talk track first. Um, what made you decide to do track? I was going to a new school where most of my friends were not going. I only knew about three people and I wanted to make new friends. <laughs> and so I thought it was just going to be a fun little time with new people. And it turned out to be a, Exactly the opposite. <laughs> Very stressful. <laughs> but I do I do have to say, like, the team was the nicest, nicest group of people, and I'm so happy that I got to join the team and meet new people. Uh, what um, what titles did you win in track? Um, <laughs> so <laughs> my freshman year, I think I, I won the short conference. I was the short conference champ in the mile. I... Um, Placed in counties and like I, I don't remember, but I definitely I definitely remember that as a four time sectional state champ in the four hundred, the eight hundred, the mile, and the two mile, and the same for um. And then I won two states that year, which was the four hundred and the mile. So and then um, I placed fourth in the meet of champions, and then I won three sectional state champions the year after because I didn't get to run a 400 before the sectionals and I was running in the last group and uh 
I was running against nobody like they were all way behind me because I was in the worst heat and I didn't know I, and I like lost by like a point point something something and I, I was so angry because if I got to run in the first heat I would have won that but whatever and then I won um two state championships again in um track which was a mile and the two mile um, so I, so you, you had a very accomplished track <laughs> for, just, for just something that you wanted to uh meet new friends with. yeah yeah definitely. um now talking you know freshman year of basketball um you, you mentioned that you know you stepped into st rose and they had that really good senior class your, fre your freshman year um any players that helped you you know adjust um to play at you know such a high level that st rose is yeah um michaela markham was a point guard before me so i just like took the opportunity to sit on the sideline and watch her um and that was great because, I mean, like, I was this, like, five-foot, like, 100-pound girl. And I, <laughs> I did not really – I did not really belong necessarily. <laughs> I definitely – so I got to take that opportunity to sit there and just, like, watch how she directed and led. Um, and all they were all – I have to say that class, like, that senior class, like, they were all so good. Like, they were just so sweet, like, loving Lucy. They, they really, like – they cared and they always like were willing to help. So um, they definitely showed me like what leadership was, all of them. And that's, that's how programs stay on top is when you get the seniors that, you know, show the freshmen that are going to be the leaders someday of the team and, you know, exactly. you carry tra the tradition down. Um, how did it win feel winning? You know, you mentioned that you were, you wanted to win a state title while you were at St. Rose, you end up winning back-to-back -back state titles. How did it feel your freshman year, uh, it was so exciting. Like, um, I, I, I thought it was so fun. We, we got on that fire truck. Oh, my God. It was so exciting. <laughs> uh, and just, like, the memory of, like, winning it was so exciting. But um, and being a part of that was very, like, I, it was almost unbelievable because I was watching them for, like, two years, like, in the stands. And now I'm a part of it with this special group of girls. So it was awesome. The first time I saw you play, it was during States, your freshman year. And I brought, you know, my sister was there. My, my sister came, my niece, and my niece is like, that's why my niece lo started loving basketball because she's not tall. She's not tall. You know, you met her. She's not tall. But she had you had a lot of energy coming off the bench. You played very tough defense. And my niece is like, she's like me. <laughs> <laughs> that's you the know, exact same thing that happened with me. Um uh Stella Clark I used, okay. to, I used to love watching her and um my I'd be sitting in the stands I was younger and uh, my mom's like look she's like she's like you like you're the same size and I'm like I know it and she is my favorite player to watch because I'm like she looks just like me <laughs> and she always hustled and I always loved watching her <laughs> it's but isn't it's funny how you know what you know a little kid in the stand watching a high school game and all of a sudden now they want to play that sport and you know like you looked up to Stella you know my you know my niece is you know she's only nine but you know she started playing basketball the next year you know the next next time she was a, a lot, uh, able to um so and I, you know I talked to other players about that like I, you know she lives in Jackson so I bring her to a bunch of memorial games and she does the camps over there and they come running up to her at the gate, you know, after their game's Aww. over. And I, she seems more popular than I am at some, <laughs> some of these <laughs> games, but, but the, you know, as a little kid, she, you know, heard the smile on her face and, you know, that's, you know, good that the, you know, players recognize that too. Yeah. Um, so going, going to sophomore year, what are some goals you had set for yourself? Because um, to me that, you know, your freshman team was a great team, but uh, for some reason, I, I, your sophomore team, I just thought it was such a complete team with, you know, Sam Anchor in the defense, Lauren, her shooting, you you running the point, you know, you had um, uh, Bryn and, you know, Michaela transfer in. Um, but what were some of the goals you set for yourself your sophomore year? Um, I just, like, took it upon myself to make sure that now, I'm not like the freshman off the bench. I have to now lead the team, which was definitely an adjustment as a sophomore trying to lead a more mostly juniors and seniors. So uh -huh. that was going to be a difficult task, but I tried my best and um, it worked out. We won states, but that my main thing was trying to become the leader. Um, one more, one more, you know, your freshman year, um, Mary Beth was supposed to coach, right, the freshman year? And yeah. that was the year that uh, 
the stupid rule that they got rid of the rule like two months after they said yeah. she couldn't coach. Um, how was it? Um, you had Coach Carter and uh, Coach Janine was the assistant. Y- yes. Um, how was it? You know, I know a lot of people love Coach Coach Carter, and uh, I just you know him going to the games. You know, the following years, always players are going up to him after the game. Um, what were you able to learn from Coach Carter? Because um, I know he was there for a few years before, you know, you know, before yeah, you were he there. Coached Coach Mallon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the long, yeah, because he played for uh, the Long Branch Ties uh, and stuff. I loved Coach Carter. He was great. Um, and I actually like still sometimes go to his trainings now, too, which is nice to see him. But um, he was a smart coach, but he really cared about his players and you could feel it, which was special. Like, and you could see everyone go up to him and give him hugs, and he yep. he just he just mean he just means very very well. Like he loved he just loved us. That's loved that it. that's the stuff that stands out. You know that you know a lot of people could teach you basketball, but you could see that you know the way that you know the players react when they see him. You know off the court shows you you know how, how much he cared for them, and you know that they really you know bought into him and uh, mm-hmm. what he was doing. Um, so your sophomore year was the first year with Coach Mary Beth. Uh, how has she helped your game? Um, she allowed me to take over the team, especially as a sophomore. She helped me. Um, she she didn't she never didn't have confidence in me, so she mm-hmm. let me just take the reins um, and be the point guard and lead, um, which is special. Um, and she was great, and um, that team was just exciting. Like that was a fun year. Yeah, like like I I thought it was such a complete team, and we'll talk. I want to talk a couple couple of the games your, your sophomore year. Um, bef- before I get into the games, what are some things Lauren and Sam and uh, Stapleton, you know, because they were the seniors um, your sophomore year that you know they taught you. Um, they had a a lot of principles that Coach Whalen taught them. So like they they were big on like the extra pass and like swinging the ball as a team. Mm-hmm. which um, I learned with them, like, on the AU team. And that that's the right way to play, in my opinion. And mm-hmm. so we, it was a very unselfish team, and that is exactly why we had great success. Um, and I just loved the way they played because they were unselfish, and we didn't care who was scoring, who was finishing, who was making the assists. It was – as seniors, they really didn't care about any of that, which is amazing. Um, first game I want to talk about your sophomore year, Manchester in the short conference semis. Um, I'm a big matchup person. I'm pretty good with the matchups. I did not like the matchup for St. Rose as, as, you know, being a St. Rose. And, you know, I told, you know, everyone that I didn't, I didn't like the matchup the way, you know, Manchester matched up. Just talk that game a little bit, you know, the dis- disappointment because um, you, you girls had a great run. The only loss was Rutgers prep up until that point, And, you know, Lauren was out that game. Yeah. Um, so just talk, you know, disappointment, uh, you know, getting eliminated in the short conference semis. I wanted the short conference tournament uh, so bad. <laughs> I wanted to win that so bad, so it was heartbreaking. Um, definitely was very sad. and uh, um, yeah. yeah, It hurt, and I wanted to go back there and not and win, <laughs> win again next year, but we lost in the short conference. Uh, um, semis again. <laughs> semis again, so that was heartbreaking again. But uh, uh, it, was, it was sad, but it was um, – it was almost something that like you learned from and it gave us more of a spark in states. So um now you girls lost. I I, I interviewed Mary or Donnelly early in the weekend. There was that you got you girls had that big gap, you know, you had like ten or eleven days before your first state game. Yeah. Um I know Mary Beth I, I was told Mary Beth was trying to get a, like a yeah. game scheduled in between just to keep you fresh and it just didn't happen. You had that first state game against Notre Dame prep, and you know they <laughs> they came out they they that were was winning. A scary game. <laughs> yes, and then like all of a sudden, halfway through the third, all of a sudden Notre Dame couldn't get the ball past half court. You know, you girls just really turned it up, and then you know you went you know basically sailing from that. You know, you know the next game was a pretty easy game for you for you girls, and then you had St. John Vianney. Talk what it meant because St. John Vianney came in with all the hype that year. Um, and then, you know, Lauren goes off and hits nine threes, you know, something, you know, I, I've seen a lot of basketball and, you know, something, you know, I haven't seen in a long time. Um, what did it mean, you know, just like, you know, basic, you know, dominating St. John Vianney and winning that's South Jersey group final, because some people say, 
you know, Shore Conference Tournament, South Jersey non-public A tournament, and then TOC. Those are the three most important titles to win. So how did it feel beating St. John Vianney in that game? Oh, that that game was amazing. Uh, Lauren, that Lauren herself was just amazing in that game. Like that is unbelievable. Um, and the feeling was awesome. And they, I'm, I, they beat us on a buzzer beater. I think my freshman year. I think. No, you, you beat them freshman year. No, the bu- in the in the in the in one they beat us. Um. Oh, maybe in the short tournament. Yeah, in the short in, tournament. Because in the states, and, you got you girls. No, yeah, in the short tournament and the okay. and buzzer beater and the feeling in that locker room was horrible. I will oh. never forget it. Like it was, they were screaming and, and we heard them. Like it was <laughs> the most thin, thin um, door and you could hear them and it was horrible. And I never felt so like horrible in my entire life and sitting in that locker room with our team. So we were coming, we wanted to beat them so bad <laughs> and it felt great to just walk off that court and win. And we did not have the hype that year, so. No, no, you didn't. You know, they had, you know, they had that strong senior class. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that was what, that was, that seating, I didn't didn't get that seating. I understood what St. John Vianney was one in the shore, right? They were one that year? I think so. Um, I understood that, but I didn't, you know, I thought, in the the states, I don't get with the PowerPoints. It makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) yeah, you were ranked. You were ranked low. I was like, "How is it? How are they? <laughs> They're like the second best team." I don't it's understand. Um, so, how did it feel winning back-to-back state titles? Not a lot of players. Oh my gosh, that was so exciting! Yeah. So exciting. I remember and, when you were screaming like back to back. Like it was so. It was awesome. Um, yeah, that I, I was at that game, and uh, there was a. Uh, you girls look good that game. And, uh, you know, Michael yeah. Hart, they were a tough team, you know, that year. So, um, last, last game I want to talk to you about was the, Fra- the Franklin game. Uh-huh. Um, you know, they had all the hype, number one in the state, obviously, and they were, uh, you know, ranked in the country. You know, they, they were they were the real deal. And then, you know, it comes down to almost the, the last possession, basically. How did it feel, you know, playing in such a competitive game against a team that's nationally ranked like that? Um. It was definitely an exciting game, and we only lost by, like, four points, which was heart- heartbreaking. And I, I felt like if we had a little more time, we could have pulled it off. So it was so sad. Like, it, it was we, – we played a good game, too. Diamond Miller is just a special player. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you can really do about her. Um, yeah. And it was so sad because I really thought we would have had a chance with the TSC if we beat them. But, um, yeah, it, it was it was a it was just a good game for me to be a part of because like you said they were nationally ranked and they were a great team so um, it was a good challenge. Yeah, it, as a fan, it was a you know fun game to be at uh, too because you know it was so so competitive and stuff like that. Um, I want to, we'll talk junior year real real quick. Um, what I I like to ask players this because to me sophomore to junior years when I you know me being a fan I see the biggest improvements on the court or you know soccer field. Uh, what was something you wanted to improve on from your sophomore year? Um, I knew that like my freshman and sophomore year that my big thing was like my defense and I was like always stopping like great players, but I knew that now I had to take um scoring role a little bit more seriously I had to score a little bit more because um, most of our offensive weapons had graduated at that point and now it was my turn to have to contribute in that way so um, obviously like just shooting drives I, I it was more of everything on offense yeah, I saw your junior year. You used that like pull up jumper in the in the lane a lot, a lot, which mm-hmm. I, I loved. Um, I know because t- t- Tiny tweeted about that like later in the season. I was like, she's been doing that all season. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, last year, you know, it was a fun team to watch. Um, I want to ask, uh, do you think the team felt the pressure or had the bullseye on your back because you came, you know, all the hype came in la- last season? Uh, you know, you ranked number one in the state. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we definitely had a huge target on our back because <laughs> even 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 teams that should not compete with us came out like it was their Super Bowl. And uh, <laughs> I will never forget Wall. That was scary. We almost lost to Wall our junior year, which was 
Not wall, sorry. Shore. Shore, Shore Regional. I was getting – I didn't go to that game. I went to Manaswan versus Hometel where they playing that day. I was like, oh, they're going to blow Shore Regional out. Yeah. And then Bryn, Bryn's dad's texting me like, like we're losing. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, my God. And then he was going on how, you know, you know, Dre host, she was a freshman last year, and, you know, she's she's going to be a very talented player. And he, yeah, she, she, was, very she was just going going off, and, uh, you know, her and La Rosa were knocking down threes like it was tip job. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Thank God we pulled that off. That was scary. <laughs> yeah, you just saw me at the Madison game. I was like, not even. I stopped keeping stats at the Madison game because I was just <laughs> too busy waiting to get text updates. Oh my gosh. Um, I want to talk. You know, it happened a lot when I was in high school, and you know, Mary Beth took the team down to Naples for you know the winter, you know, uh, winter break tournament. How is that? You know, being able, you know, getting out of state, playing some top teams around, you know, around the country. How is that feeling? Being able to play in Naples. Oh, it was so, first it was exciting to even go to Florida. It was like <laughs> December, we were all so excited. Um, it was great team bonding. Uh, we spent a lot of the day. We had like one one game a day. So like we were on the beach like the whole day. And then playing. <laughs> it was more of a vacation. But um, no, it was exciting. We, we got to play like top teams around the country, which was exciting because that's something I feel like you usually do with your AAU team. You're not really like playing that many teams around the country with your high school team. So it was very exciting to be able to play great talent um, for St. Rose. Um, and we learned a lot and it was a good thing to do um, in the beginning of our junior year. Um, I actually got hurt. Yes. Um, so I don't even think I played more than one game. I think it was like three games. So it was more really a vacation for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was getting, I was getting updates from uh, you know, Brent's dad and he said that you, you were ankle, right? was an ankle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, not worth pushing it down down there for that for that tournament, yeah. you know. Especially when you you girls basically hit RBC as soon as you got off the the plane. Um, oh, that was a tough one. <laughs> that was that was that was an ugly one. Um, just one. I want to just bring up two two games your junior year. First, the Cherokee game. The. <laughs> um, you know, as a fan, you know, and I've been vocal about this since I started doing these interviews, um, you know, shock, you know, have to have a shot clock. And it was it was tough for me to watch. I understand the style. And, you know, to me, Mary Beth says it right. You know, yeah, she cares about wins and losses, but her main job is to get you players ready for the next next level. And, you know, ho holding the ball like that, you're not getting ready for the next level. I, I've never experienced it. <laughs> and to me, you're a pretty calm player. Um you know, on the court, but that game, you, you will, I mean, you, you keep yourself composed on the court, but that game, you, you could tell that that was, that was bothering you. How, what, you know, what, what was going through your head, you know, that, well, that the refs were not helping. I swear, okay. like literally, like I, 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 they almost fouled the entire team out, which I don't even know is possible. <laughs> they, they were, they were like calling carries on me, which I'm yeah. like, I'm just dribbling the ball. Like I've been my entire life. So like, <laughs> I, I don't know why this is such an is issue, but they were holding the ball. Like it was the low, such a low scoring game. And I, I mean, like, I, I definitely don't understand it, but like, I mean, good for them. They got a win, I guess. But, uh, but I definitely think we need a shot clock and we need to prepare for college because um, we're definitely putting us New Jersey girls in a um, disadvantage not right. having a shot clock. And then we had to transition to yet another thing going into college, which, which, which shouldn't be. Yeah. Because, you know, I know RBC last year, they went, they did a game in New York and they had a shot, right. I think it was in New York that they had, think, they, yeah. they, had a, they were playing with the shot clock, which, you know, to me, you know, it's just an advantage getting, getting you ready. And plus I, I as a fan, it's like, tough to sit there and watch a team. Yeah. Over. Oh my God. I bet it was tough to play. And I, I um I do think that like the top teams in the state definitely play like quicker, so yeah. I don't necessarily think the shot clock would really really like, no no but, you definitely but, do get shots up within thirty seconds for most of the time, but uh it's teams like it's games like that where you definitely need one. Yeah, you could they were you know they were they were playing for the win and yeah. uh, you know they are very fundamentally sound you know team you know they run their play and they're not going to let other teams dictate. You know, it was a good plan, I guess. It, it worked. <laughs> I, I got in the car and I was like, I mean, I guess it worked. Good for them. They got the win. Um, uh, s switching over to this year, um, did you think the season was going to happen with COVID? I really did not think it was going to happen. I had a very low expectation for it and uh, it was heartbreaking. 
that so I, I didn't think it was happening. So, but so even though it was only 15 games, you you happy that you know you you girls got something in? I I guess it's better than nothing. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It's still hard because the it's like not even half a season we would play. Yeah. Like other sports are even get got to do states. Like I'm pretty sure even like wrestling did, which is nuts that like we can't yeah. as a basketball. But uh, yeah. that was the most disappointing thing is that we couldn't do states. That was hard. Off topic. So you know what I think is crazy. You have to wear a mask playing volleyball. <laughs> right really? Now. Yeah. Yeah. Because one of the Cherokee girls that plays basketball, she, she does volleyball just to, you know, play another, you know, keep active. Yeah. And her dad told me that they, they have to wear a mask. I was like, wait a minute. They didn't have to wear a mask playing basketball and volleyball. You're not, you're, you know, you know, you're not playing defense on anybody. You're right. all separated. And, and whenever you are close, it's your own teammates that you're right. with. <laughs> so that very, weird. Very, very weird. Um, what are some goals you ha- you had for this final season in, in, in the abbreviated season you had? I wanted to shock people a little bit with this team. That was my number one thing because really nobody thought we'd be even anything. Me with- being a St. Rose person, you, you <laughs> shocked me. Shot. <laughs> exactly. And, <laughs> and I just wanted everyone to just buy into me and I, I was going to help lead us and I, I was going to have everyone. I, I just wanted everyone to know that we can do this. And we, we were able to definitely turn people's heads. And uh, that was my main goal was to show that, that we, we are good. We are a good team. You um, kind of touched on it a little bit. What was something you hope to pass down to the underclassmen? Just leadership. Mm-hmm. I, I just want them to just know that like negativity and uh, selfishness will never get you anywhere. And that, mm-hmm. that a great player will lead, lead their team. And uh, I hope that's what I taught. I taught, um, I taught the players that are uh, under me that uh, that um, they just need to all be nice to each other and uh, look out for each other and um, believe in each other. They, that's a big one. The only game I'm going to bring up, the Manchester game, I don't think I've seen a more complete team game in all my life than, you know, um, if you would have told me, you know, you, you girls, you know, blew them out pretty good that, you would have had under 20 points, you know, I think Rosie only had 12, you know, you two are the main scorers. And um, if you would have told me you girls would have won like that with you two only scoring that many points, I would have told whoever told me that you, you're crazy, but you know, everybody, you know, Layla did a phenomenal job defensively on destiny and, you know, she had solid, you know, solid uh, sec, uh, third quarter scoring points um Irvin you know she was doing every you know rebound and making the perfect pass on the cuts and you know knocking down the jumper when she needed to right um you know Maggie you know started it off you know for she had a very strong first half scoring um how how was it you know playing in such a you know such a great game where everybody got involved and you know they didn't have to rely on you you know to shoulder the load I I wasn't surprised because I knew they all could do it it was just it was just if they believed in themselves and that and mm-hmm. that game was a special one and I've ne- I don't think I've ever really been happier after a game mm-hmm. uh, with the te- with my team because everyone was just so happy that like it was just it was it was beautiful it really was it was just a great game it- and I was worried that uh in the beginning of the season like I was getting like I was getting guarded well but like soon the double team was coming on more yep. and more towards the end of the season. So I knew that I wasn't good. I, we weren't going to beat them if I tried to force in 30. Yeah. Like it would never, it would never work that way. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I've learned from experience. And uh, they, they were just in the right spots and I was able to find them open because when two people came on me, like I, I even had bench players who barely saw the court make like jump shots in that game. It was just unbelievable. <laughs> I was so proud of everything. Oh my God. That's, that, awesome. that's great. And, you know, something, you know, I streamed a lot of, you know, the games, obviously, and something that stood out this year, your, your passing, like some of these passes you were coming up with. Uh, they're my um, favorite thing to do. <laughs> I see. I played, I played point guard. I did not care if I scored one point. I just mm-hmm. wanted, wanted to pass them and get the ball into the right person's hands at the right spot. Exactly. And, uh, but some, I feel as if, uh, I feel as if, um, reporters and the newspaper and media don't make it easy for a point guard because you don't get you don't get credit you do not get credit for making the extra pass and uh leading a team and I think that's a disgrace and uh it's something that 
people need to work on because it's tough. It's tough to be the girl who wants to pass to everybody and barely get recognized for these, like, for just, it's tough to watch other point guards. It's so sad to me, like the lack of uh, recognition, I should say, yeah. from for the non points being scored. Everything's about the score. That goes back to your sophomore year. You know, to me, Sam was such a vital part of your team oh, just 100%. for what she did on the defensive end. And, you know, because she didn't score a lot of points. But, you know, sometimes, in the, you know, when you played, um, I think, Madison at home, you were you were trailing a little bit. I was in Disney. I was streaming the game down in Disney. And, uh, you know, you, you start you started off, you were trailing, and, you know, she not, you know, it might have been her only basket. She knocked down a big three that stopped him, yeah, you know, Madison okay. run. And, you know, and what she does defensively, you know, she she did a great job on faith. And that's a, that's and a she doesn't get, it, you know, de- you know, girls like that, you know, even Mary that, you know, that year, you know, she would come in off the bench oh, yeah, and provide a spark player. defensively, even though, you know, she wasn't, you know, an offensive, per, you know, a uh, focal point on the team that, mm-hmm. that year. So I agree. And that's. I, mean, I think most Stapleton too, very. Oh, yeah. Because she does. She, she, she makes the clever. right pass. Oh, and, uh, she is probably one of the the most fun players I've ever got to play with because she just doesn't, she doesn't care. She will get you open. She will get anyone open. She will knock down her shot when it's, she always hits those vital threes as well. Like you're saying. And uh, her defense was spectacular this year before she got hurt. And I would say your, your, your junior year um, in the States against RBC, you know, Allie was having her way a little bit with, with Tedesco. And then I think Mary Beth puts uh, Stapleton on her. And then, you know, she was being so physical with Allie. And, you oh, know, because yeah. mo- mo- yeah. you don't really see her cover the center, you know, that year you didn't really see mm-hmm. her cover the bit. And it, like, they, Allie couldn't get the ball, like the way mm-hmm. she was. And I, I said to somebody after him, I go, wow. I go, I go, I, I go, I was so impressed with the way, you know, <laughs> she, you know, she, basically took Allie out of the game in the second half, which, yeah. you know, helped, helped the team. And you're right. People don't notice, you know, it doesn't get recognized in, in, in the papers and stuff. And, you know, not to, yeah. you know, not to tune my home, but, you know, a lot of parents say that's why they like following me. Cause I, you know, I could, I oh, see all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, a couple more things. So I don't, I don't keep you on here forever. How did it feel getting a thousand points? Oh, uh, it was, it was, it was very, very exciting. I wasn't sure it was going to happen due to the shortened season. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I really did not want to do was um, force it at all. Like uh-huh. yeah. I, I scored myself and my, my team that I would not be that player who was like just trying to constantly get it like that. That's just no fair to anybody. So I wanted it to be as like unselfish as possible. And if it happens, it happens. And obviously I really wanted it to happen. <laughs> So I was very excited that it was able to happen with this the shortened season. So all of the basically in a week span, you scored a thousand points, and you were also named Valley Victorian, right? Yeah. How is that? Because I tell players, you know, to me, grades are the number one thing because you could get, you know, right to your own, you know, wherever you want to go, and you know, whatever you want to do. How did it feel, you know, being a val- named Valley Victorian? Because I know St. Rose, you know, that's a that's a big accomplishment at St. Rose. <laughs> Um, my mom and my mom's always said like, like, um, academics are more important. Always. My family always says, even my dad, like, and, um, I've always been serious about my academics. Like you can tell if I've you're doing, been, if I'm you're just, doing vocab in the car rides, to oh, basketball okay. games. I'm just a competitive person. So like, it's not that I, I just like always want to be the best in whatever I can do. Um, so yeah, it, it was definitely very hard to do be playing so much sports like I said like it was like studying in the car like like crazy like uh up in like till like midnight after trainings because I had a test the next day like it no one knows like how hard it was but uh it, it was it, it was very it was very exciting and I just like hope that like any other like younger player could just know that you can you can do both <laughs> yeah that's, I, I, I know I, I say this almost every interview, but when, you know, when I was growing up, you either played sports or you were booked, you know, you had got high grades. You didn't do both. And you you girls are so impressive with, you know, playing at such a high level and keeping such high high grades. So uh, congrats on that. Um, but how did it feel being named to All Shore first team? That was very exciting and uh, something I wanted, so. I was, I was on that. I, and you know it, those are some household names that you're with too so you know that's something definitely to be proud of um last question about b- 
basketball and then, you know, we'll get talk your future real quick and let you go. Um, you and Rosie, you know, she transfers in, but it seems like you two were playing for, you know, since you were little kids together. How did you two, I know she trains up at U.S. Hoops with you. How did you two get such, you know, such a bond so quickly and, uh, you know, basically know where each other is going to be on the court? Um, so, like I said, Tom Flaherty, like, he lives down the shore. So he um, would train us at Orchard Park, a few girls who live down here. So we weren't necessarily going up to use hoops all the time. In the summer, we played down here. So we were there, like, every single day uh, in the heat, sweating, playing, like, one-on-one, -on -one, full court. Like, it's brutal sometimes, but yeah. it was worth it. Um, and uh, being with her every day in the summer, like, we started developing a relationship. But um, – I, we became very close. I live in uh, Bayhead, so I don't necessarily live really close to Belmar, and she lives in Bradley, so, like, she lives, like, two minutes away, mm -hmm. so after, like, if we had, like, a four o'clock practice, I'd just go to her house, um, and I almost, we almost became, like, <laughs> we call each other, like, we're, like, sisters, because, like, she is my little sister, and uh, I, like, want to punch her half the time, because, like, she annoys <laughs> me so much, like, a little sister, but I love her, like, she, I, I've never really had a bond with someone quite like it. Like most of the time you're just like friends or like best friends, but like, no, nah, like she's more like a little, little sister. And like, she had bunk beds in her room. And like, I always, I, we would just joke around. Like the top one was always mine because like I was always over. We spent, we spent so much time together that like, and we train, we train like every day almost together still. So uh, um, it was just so much fun getting to play with her. Um, and she, she's just a player who will listen to me like from the start like she's like <laughs> I don't take many things personal from many people but she's like but like when when you yell at me I don't really care at all and I'm like oh thanks <laughs> and she, she just she was just always willing to like listen to me and uh I'd sometimes I'd scream at her in her face and she wouldn't even blink an eye and uh she definitely um definitely listened and uh it was a lot of fun and um I'm just excited to see what she now does with the next two years and I I'll be following her a hundred percent. Yeah. I look forward, you know, getting to know her over the next two years too. And, you know, carrying the St. Rose torch. Um, yep. You up for some rapid fire questions real quick. Sure. <laughs> What's your favorite TV show? Um, <laughs> I would say right now, um, all American. How about favorite movie? Um, <laughs> I don't really I'm so bad with watching TV shows and movies how, how do you how do you have time to watch TV shows and I barely watch anything <laughs> all right well, so we'll, we'll we'll skip that one what's your favorite color blue blue what's your favorite number number 10 what why did you uh, well um Markham was number 10 so I guess you would you wanted to be number 10 from the get-go my oh, niece yeah. When when we when I took her your sophomore year, she was like she was number one last year. <laughs> yeah, I was. Um, how about favorite song or you know if you don't have a favorite song you know group or or singer? Um, I love Thomas Rhett. He's a country singer. I I, I know. Um, okay. okay. So um, I, I'm going to his concert June 11th. <laughs> so I'm very excited. Yes, that has to be fun being able to get out of the house and actually go to an event. Yeah. Um, what is something you enjoy doing in your free time when you're not studying or playing basketball? <laughs> um, playing, uh, hanging out with my, um, friends and family, but, um, one thing I really love to do, it's, I mean, I guess it's basketball, but like, I love to train other little girls around the area because I, it just brings so much joy, like to just give back. I don't know. <laughs> That's great. Um, is that something you, you, you know, you get, you know, after college, think about doing, you know, maybe tr do some training on the side and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, definitely. I definitely want to. Um, la last question for this. What favorite, uh, school subject? I don't really have a favorite, which is weird, <laughs> but I think math, maybe math. Yeah, okay. Um, now just want to talk to your future real quick. What, uh, was it about Lafayette that, you know, that made you fall in love with that you picked Lafayette? Um, it was the first school I ever visited uh, at an elite camp, um, and they were actually the first coaches to ever recruit me. So um, there's always been a bond there um, early on, like freshman year, eighth grade. Like, um, so I've always, I've, I've just 
love them and uh, love the school. The school is beautiful. And my dad always used to be like, I always used to say like Lafayette's his favorite. And it, I really wanted to be close to home and a great, a smart school. So yeah. it fit everything. Um, do you know what you want to study? I'm not sure yet. Mm -hmm. I either want to do like something with business or go into pre-med. We'll see. <laughs> um, so you, you probably don't have do any idea what you would like to do after college. You could give me a couple of different answers. Um, I have no idea. Either become uh, an orthopedic surgeon, <laughs> um, do something with business, or uh, or hopefully I could go to like become like a grad assistant or like a coach at another school and then get my grad school paid for. It. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's uh, some 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 good goals there. And uh, I had I had back surgery years ago, and uh, the doctor walked in. He looked very young, but he wasn't. He actually went to Duke when Bobby Hurley was at Duke. Oh, wow. So, but but he looked like he was like close to my age. So, <laughs> um, so last question I'm going to ask, and I'll let you go. What advice would you give your younger self? um anything is possible <laughs> never 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 always give 100 mm -hmm. all right abby thank you for spending you know almost an hour with me i think i knew this one was going to be long because out of all the players i kind of know your game and you know st rose's history the best uh but i appreciate you taking time out you know and i wish you luck you know obviously i'll be following your career at lafayette Oh, last question. How does it, you know, you're going to Lafayette, you know, back with one of your teammates. How do you feel, you know, being able to play with Michaela? Because she had a pretty good, you know, freshman season out there. Yeah, she did. I'm very excited to see uh, see her and uh, play with her again. And it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. It seems like a lot more short girls are being recruited and going to the Patriot League, which is good because, you know, Patriot League is very high academics and uh, uh, it'll be fun to see the Patriot, Patriot League rise, you know. In the I know. Almost every team has a girl I've played against, which is funny. Yeah, and, you know, Colgate has, you know, Jenna. And uh, I know that, I mean, she's only a junior, but Abby Ferguson from Holmdale uh, committed there. <laughs> uh, so that, that, you know, somebody like me who likes following the shore players makes it easier when, you know, <laughs> multiple shore players on different teams playing against yes. each other. So, all right, Abby, thank you very much. I'll let you go. And like I said, good luck next year at Lafayette. Thank you. Bye. Bye.